hey, you should be of good cheer. Let's talk about it today. Hey folks, God bless you. Louis T. Sienna here uh, for another broadcast. And, you know, um, I really want to speak a word of encouragement today, even though it seems like we're going through chaos and, and maybe you feel hopeless in some way, but I don't really think we should be. Now, I want to answer a couple questions that I've gotten and I've gotten even some today and I've been getting them for quite for the last week. Um, and is how do we handle this? Number one, let's first talk about the prophetic. I had a wonderful friend call me up. He said, man, I didn't see any of this in the, in the spirit. Um, you know, and he's had friends overseas who prophesied things about this election. They didn't see it. They prophesied, um, you know, Trump was going to win a second term and, and all that. Number one, Trump ain't dead. Um, it, nothing says, and I know they're trying to block him from doing it again, but just let's just hold our horses on that. Two, why didn't the prophets see this? Why didn't God speak to us? That's what people would say. Why did God speak to me and show me all this stuff? And, and you know, there's a part of the prophetic that we need to understand and a part of, of God that God still remains a mystery. God still keeps things from us because he knows in his wisdom he can better navigate us and better produce in us what he's ultimately after in us without by by not withholding but by releasing revelation in stages and not giving us this blanket uh thing that we would obviously do in a heartbeat if we could because you know we would try to fulfill things sometimes in our own strength. Now, I'm going to say it again. I know it's going to get me in trouble. might get me in trouble with YouTube. Uh, I don't agree with the way the election was ran. Mail-in ballots have always been a problem. France stopped in the 70s from using mail-in ballots because they knew they were fraudulent back then. Uh, Jimmy Carter, lifelong Democrat, said they were the number one problematic thing of elections is mail-in ballots. So... Let's not assume that mail-in ballots, all of a sudden we had figured that out in this, um, uh, in this go around, because that's just not so. Um, but I want you to be encouraged. I want to ask you a question. If God did not warn us about this, has God mad at us? No. I'm going to say some things that's going to get me in trouble, and, and that's okay. I'm used to it. But me and my, uh, me and Randy Lechner were talking, and you know, one of my frustrations is everything is prayer. We got to pray. How many people have heard that? We got to pray. 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 And I so love prayer that I don't want to diminish it at all. But I want to talk to you that that is not, that is not the, uh, um, the solution to the problem. Because I'm going to probably ask you this. Did you not pray? Did, when you heard, you know, about this election, did you not offer up any prayer for it? Did you not talk to the Lord about it? Did you not intercede about it? Did you just not care about it? I don't believe any of those are true. I believe, matter of fact, that you did pray and you did um, do all those things that we told you to do, which was to pray. Told you to go to worship events. And those are awesome. And I don't, I'm not even, not, I don't want to diminish those. Those are important vital spiritual tools but let's just take second chronicles chapter 7 it says if my people are called by name and humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways i think there's a wickedness that we need to turn from and yeah, this is going to get me in so much trouble and it's it's not a wickedness of of us doing something it's a wickedness of omission um the wickedness of, we are commanded to go preach the gospel. That's it. I heard Bill Johnson release, recently say, we have two options, go or send. You know, we, sometimes we get, to, as a leader, I get to send and I get to go. I have a spiritual daughter in Brazil right now. Love that. She's down there for a couple weeks. I go I go and preach uh, to foreign countries and stuff. I've never spoke to someone who's just, 
you know, chomping at the bit to go, um, to go overseas. And, and I think that, that a, a lot of people, um, um, does, d don't understand that God doesn't tell us everything. We're not Jesus. And even, by the way, did Jesus know everything? And the answer to that is no. Um, that's why he asked questions. I love when people go, um, you know, why did Jesus ask how long the child had been throwing himself into the fire? You know, how long has he been like this? Because Jesus didn't know any desire to have that, have that answered. And it's important to understand that prayer is a component. But even in the book of Esther, when they're praying, now, I want you to read this with me. If you'll turn to the book of Esther, chapter 4, is where we're going to start. And um, she's told, for if you remain si completely silent at this time, this is four, verse 14, relief and deliverance will rise for the Jews from another place. But you and your father's house will perish. Yet, who knows whether you have come to this kingdom for such a time as this? Then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai, Go, gather all the Jews who are in present in Shushan, and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My maids and I will fast likewise, and so I will go to the king, which is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. You know what they were praying for? They weren't praying for their deliverance. They were praying for Esther to have favor with the king. So even in here, it's they didn't the the their their solution was not prayer for the ultimate to end it. She didn't say everyone fast and pray and we'll all be delivered. And sometimes that's what we're praying for. We're praying for if we get enough people in a tent and we pray, we'll get deliverance. But she, she is, she is going to be that deliverer. That's what Mordecai tells her. And she goes into the king, and I don't want to go through all chapter five. It's glorious. I've taught on Esther. It's on my website. I could break down that that stuff for days. Uh, Esther is one of my favorite books of the Bible. And but what we are supposed to do, what we are supposed to do is write decrees. And proclaim the gospel. Preach the gospel of the kingdom. This is what Jesus... Let's go to the New Testament. This is what the New Testament tells us to do. So let's take this. I'm going to take this in... Well, just start at Acts 1. Okay? Jesus tells them in Acts chapter 1. And being assembled together with him, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me, for John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Therefore, when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own authority. Let me explain something to you. When God does not tell his prophets of certain things, it's because he has kept them in his own authority. In other words, if, if, if God reveals it to us, he is now placing it in our authority. But he has not revealed everything that's happened over the last two months to us. Therefore, he is keeping some of that stuff in his authority. Another in other words, and here's another thing, just to freak out the really crazy ones, he didn't keep it in his control. It's not a kingdom word. Authority is. Control is not. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Let me explain something to you. They weren't praying for Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and the world to get saved. They were praying for them. Prayer was about them being transformed. And in that transformation, they were to go out with the power of the Spirit and preach the 
gospel of the kingdom. I always tell my, my spiritual sons in my church, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Randy used to teach me this. It says, uh, David, I, I kept the, the Lord said, I keep the Lord at my right hand. It, that's as close as the kingdom is to you. You can preach the kingdom. It's at hand. That's why we lay hands on the sick because we're releasing that kingdom through through laying out of hands. And we're supposed to preach the gospel. Prayer did not turn the world upside down. The preaching of Jesus Christ, the resurrected king did. And they did, and, and God backed them up with signs and wonders displaying and manifesting that Jesus, in fact, was resurrected. Having an argument on Facebook is not preaching the kingdom. It doesn't mean you need a loudspeaker. It doesn't mean you need a platform. You just need to shake someone's hand, invite them into your life, and, and then eventually share the love of God, the very kingdom that you live in with them. Sometimes you'll be very uh, overt with it. Sometimes you'll be, be covert with it. That's why you need the Spirit. Sometimes you'll come in, and sometimes you come in, but it's not always the same. You need the Spirit. What do you do? You pray so that you are empowered with the Spirit, so that you are ready when you leave the house to go preach. When you walk in signs, wonders, miracles, and healing comes out of you. That's what the anointing is for. That's what Holy Spirit on you is for. But I'm afraid that the church veers away from Then you got a whole argument that people don't believe that's for today. And that's shame because we are to demonstrate, not just to confess, but to demonstrate him. Because that's the pattern of the Father. The Father didn't just tell us he loved us. He demonstrated that love. Jesus says, if you don't believe me, believe the works I do. The works I do, you will do, and greater than these, you will do. I have this hunch, and I don't have a, a word on it like a, uh, I can't tell you this, a word of the Lord. I don't have that. It's just in my spirit. And that, and, and I, and I'm, I'm separating those two things. Okay. Like this is, I'm, I'm after the Lord on this. Okay. And sometimes we preach that way. I don't always have like this <sighs> preaching word, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have impact because the spirit's with me. Sometimes I have to, when I preach, I know where I'm starting. I don't know where I'm ending. I just follow the spirit as he leads me. This is one of these things that I've been asking for a couple days now that I'm I'm asking this to the Lord. What are you up to? What are you up to that's so glorious that you couldn't afford to tell us so we'd screw it up? What are you up to? Now, I don't believe what he's up to is something that will not be something that will include us. I believe he's going to He's about to release something through us that we are unaware of at this moment. But I believe that there is a move of the Spirit. And that it is going to turn America upside down. It's not going to be lightning on people, zapping them and killing them. It could be a little of that. I don't want to rule it out. But it's going to be power. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be with authority. It's going to be bold. And I, I think that I want to encourage you. You prayed enough. Can I just tell you that? Can I just tell you, my brothers and sisters of Christ, can I tell you that? You prayed enough. You didn't do anything wrong. You prayed enough. Now, keep praying. But pray this. Lord, prepare me that I don't miss what you're doing in the earth. Prepare me, Lord. Do whatever you have to do to refine me that you might be able to use me for your glory, that I might bear fruit for the Father in the name of Jesus. That's, that's what you want to pray daily. 
I mean, you can pray the other stuff, Lord, save our nation. That's that's not illegal. But how is he going to do it? You know how he's going to do it? He's going to raise up mighty men and women like you and like you and like you, men and women. Ooh, women, preachers. Yeah, he's going to raise up women. Women are going to be some of the most powerful preachers in the days ahead. Powerful preachers. It's going to really upset the religious crowd because he's going to he's going to deal with all of our little false little things. But he's looking for those who will do his will, for this is their meat. This is what brings their joy. This is what makes them fulfilled is to do the will of God and know that he has both ordained it and he is working the will in you to do it. But I want you to be encouraged. He has a plan for you to do greatness, miracles, signs, and wonders. That's what he has in store for you. And I want you to rejoice in that. I don't want you to beat yourself up and all that. I want you to know that you are about to enter the greatest season of your life. I believe the church is. I don't, I don't believe the prophets missed it. I just believe we only saw dimly. And that happens. That's just part of the prophetic ministry. It just is. And I, I hate that people... I don't have an answer of why Donald Trump... And and, and I don't... I, I'm saying this on, what is it, the 13th of January. I don't think Donald Trump's enacting a military coup. He's not going to do that. He shouldn't do that. He's a law and order guy. And, um, but just wait, just wait, just wait, see what God does through us. Let's get back to preaching the gospel. Go into all the world and preach. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're doing. And we shall do great exploits in the name of God. And there will be fear upon the church because of the boldness of the apostles and prophets. I think we are about to enter a season of the refining of apostles and prophets that um, I know people don't believe in the apostles and prophets. That's why there needs to be a refining of it. But let's just hang on, baby. You haven't seen anything yet. Okay? And I just want to encourage you today with that word and let you know it's okay. It's okay not to know everything. As long as you know the one who holds everything in his hands. All right. So God bless you. And you have a great day. Bye-bye.